Are you also in your luteal phase or am I the only bitch in the room? No, absolutely I am. And also, mm. never mind. Yeah, absolutely I am. <laughs> Boundary. <laughs> No, I was going to say fun. something totally irrelevant, and I was like, just keep me on track. Let's just get through this <laughs> before I'm already derailing everything. Yeah, Meta and I were just talking, and she's like, all right, I'm going to start fading, so you should hit record. <laughs> God, we're both in our luteal. This would be really fun to listen to the two of us. I mean, thank goodness we're synced. Just I was thinking really about that when it comes to recording in the future, because, spoiler alert, there will be some shifts happening here at Thoughts May Vary. That's all we'll say. Mm-hmm. for now but follow us on instagram because news will usually drop there first actually patreon always eats first and then instagram absolutely i was thinking about that and i was like we're gonna have to really sync because if we have to do like a, a big day oh i've already today <laughs> earlier today i was booking two different trips around my cycle mm-hmm. i'm not i'm not going anywhere on my period i will be a hermit it's gotten to the point that i say luteal so much that zoe will just look at me right and be like Luteal. <laughs> he knows what time of the month it is. It's a fun word. I'm not going to lie. Luteal is a fun word. Anyway, how are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing fine. Moving and grooving. You know, feels like the first time we've met with this type of conversation. <laughs> well... <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm I'm doing a cert, I'm doing different ways that I'm not going to talk about today. So, oh, that's that. You know. Okay, well, offline later if you feel like it. You already know. You already know. I do. Well, here's the thing. I have an unpacking that I haven't so much shared with you that will be our unpacking today, which will be fun. But other things that are on my mind and coming up are just things you know about that are not mine to share. If that gives you context. I feel like I like got a lobotomy. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> okay, but well, you'll be surprised later then. <laughs> but let's talk about our unpackings. Do you want to go first? Um, not particularly. <laughs> okay. Wait, also, first of all, what? hilarious that as all these changes are coming up Let me to get, get my notes. For mm-hmm. thoughts may vary is the first time. I don't think we told the people that I got new headphones and it's the first time that I can hear myself in the history of thoughts may vary. Which, yeah, if you don't podcast, means nothing to you and it doesn't matter. But to everyone that's been here for a long time is... I mean, I've already learned to, to mitigate my interruptions. And yet now <laughs> I can actually hear myself and hear when you hear me. It's just rocked my world. But anyway, when I laugh loudly now, as we all know I do, my headphones cut out. They silence me. Because they, they're like, bitch, shut up. And that's quite nice. Hear it, go and then, it is quite nice. I'm really... Shout out Sony. I switched from Bose to Sony and so far so good. I need to do that because I could hear myself in the beginning and now I surely cannot. These, I don't know how What's you exist thing? without noise canceling headphones. They're just the light of my life. I kind of have this fear that if I were just walking around my apartment with noise canceling headphones, like of something would do. happen that would require my attention. Of course you do. Like that I wouldn't hear and uh-huh. it would be like a problem. Should we unpack that today? I do have <laughs> noise canceling headphones that I forget that I own. Like even when I'm traveling, I forget I have them. I just, as someone that's so sensey to noises and overstimulation, I don't know how they're not your best friend. Yeah. I don't know if you guys know that fact about me. I get really overstimulated with sounds. She does. Did you see the yes. meme I posted yesterday about being a Taurus? No. It was someone saying like, you're so quiet. And then Taurus being like, I wish you were too. And that's how I feel all the time. <laughs> Is just uh, I won't shut the fuck up across my forehead. You in a nutshell, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, please can make that happen. Me. I'll get you a hat. <sighs> Thanks. I'll wear it on family vacations. <laughs> to ever <laughs> shut the fuck up. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I am currently unpacking having an abundant mindset mentality around my creativity, particularly my writing. Oh, I love this. Thank you. I'll expand. Okay. If you follow me on Instagram, you might have noticed that in one of my recent dumps, I posted a photo of something I had written in my journal that said something along the lines of, my biggest fear is that if I write more, it will be the last intelligent thought I'll ever have. I have this fear that leads me to hoarding my ideas where I'm like, I'll write something and I'm like, now we're going to write something that good again. I have to hoard this. And I'll hoard it for like the book. Meadow and I both mm. have notes on our phone that's like for the book, for the book. No, no, no. And there are moments where I think I am good at disseminating specific essays 
that I'm like, no, that is actually for the book and that's, that's fine. And then there's times where I, I, this fear peaks in and it's a very drought mentality. So I've been chewing on this a lot lately. And of course, as one does, also, I'm sorry if you're watching this video, cause I just know today is going to be one of those days where I'm just fucking with my hair. So sorry. I'm really deep in the trenches of feeling this way. And then all of a sudden, because this is how the world works, Rick Rubin told me to go fuck myself. And I was like, right, right. So I'm reading The Creative Act and I open, as you guys know, I microdose it every morning. Meta told me to read it a year ago. I jumped on board recently and I opened to a chapter that's literally called The Abundant Mindset. And it is about this exact concept. Have you read that chapter already? I've read the whole book twice, Gabby. Whatever. Okay. I pre I had it on January 17th of last year. I can't, how many times can we talk about this? <sighs> Cry me <a> river. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> I love fucking with you. <laughs> it's so fun. Oh God. I'm, I'm so glad we're in the same hormonal phases at the same time. <laughs> I know. Oh, it makes this please. friendship easier. So anyway, so the chapter talks exactly about this concept of hoarding ideas. And so let me, I wrote, I wrote some notes cause I didn't want to butcher it, but that chapter literally talks about if you live in a scarcity mindset and you're hoarding these great ideas, you're choosing to live in scarcity, which is going to lead to stagnation because you already have that wall and that fear of drought, as he calls it, completely blocking you and preventing you from your ideas. And also from like allowing, how he says, like allowing the river to flow. And so it just got me thinking about all of the different ways in which I've done that with my writing. And I think it's just been a good call out to like force me to not do that and to trust a little bit more in my abilities. And something that he talks about in the book is explaining like, why would you wait to put your ideas out and to continue editing and editing and editing? Because first of all, you have no gauge of whether or not your edits are going to make something better. They're going to be different, but you don't know if they're going to be better or worse. So you can't gauge it to begin with. Why would you continue to edit something and hold something for so long, let's say years to be dramatic, so that when you put the project out, it's no longer even a reflection of who you are now. And the way he describes it is like, you're no longer holding a mirror. It's like an old photograph. Mm -hmm. And why would you feel that same excitement with this old photograph than you would putting out this reflection of you? And that's or not to say- a tool to disseminate and edit what you truly mean to convey when it's not your right. truth anymore. Right. Right. And that's not to say that your previous work is bad. It's just no. different. Mm -hmm. And I think about that a lot with the articles that I have published where I'll reread stuff and I'll be like, that is so corny. But in the moment, I'm like that, I was loving it. And I was like, that mm -hmm. is a great sentence. And then there's other moments where I'm like, that is the best sentence I've ever written. Will I ever mm. write anything like that again? But then I'm like, why was that the best sentence I ever, I think I've ever written? And then I'll remember kind of what I was doing around that time in my life and how tapped in I was to journaling and to me and to my emotions. And those emotions allowed me to like download and have that writing. So it's like, it's an interesting dance that I've been doing in my head of identifying what he's saying in the book of like, you can't get that attached to shit because you are going to change. So your work is going to change. But then also using that same thing to motivate me to be like, stop shitting on your previous work or thinking that your work was too good. And also at the same time, don't think that one diary entry and one journal entry is going to be your entire life story. Like I've, I've had this thing in my head where it's like, I feel like it's like the one article that's going to make mm. the difference. That's going to like make my career. And I've like, I remember thinking about that, especially when I first left Condé Nast, having this conversation internally being like, okay, there's been people who have left the big company and have gone to a different magazine or have gone freelance even. And then they wrote that piece and then they became editor in chief back at the big company. That'll mm. be me. But I need that one piece. And I've clung to that for years. I didn't and know so that. it's, it's interesting. It's the same way that I like categorize what I'm allowed to do because my expertise isn't there yet. Right. Totally. And it's interesting too, when like I look at lists and lists that I want to be a part of and I'll see people who are already on the list and I'll be like, oh, I can't believe they're on there. And I don't even mean that in a bad way. I just mean it like, 
oh, I've done that. Mm -hmm. That's interesting that I didn't think that I could even like try Mm -hmm. to be on any list because I hadn't Mm -hmm. done X, Y, Z yet. I don't know. It's just, it's been really interesting. And it's been like, I think the closer that I get to 30, the more I'm like, I know Meadow's like, hurry up. Welcome. So thrilled. (laughs) The closer I get to 30, the more I'm like, what are you fucking waiting for? Just do it. Just try. Like, if that's your last great idea, maybe you pivot. But, like, what are we doing here hoarding ideas? But also, like, even if we were to play that game logically, how could it be your last great idea? Like, you have have known how to write a well-worth-it sentence for, what, half your life? Like, let's just say by age 14, 15, 13. Sure. There's, there's some good thoughts in there. That's not yeah. even a scratch on the life that you're going to live. So how even logically can mm-hmm. we think that that would even be, I guess yeah. what you kind of mentioned this a little bit, but to flesh it out a bit more, what has been the difference when you look back at your writing, if you're in the place now of that lack, let me hoard. And then you look back at a sentence and think, oh, I remember where I was then and how it felt different. What are you doing in those two different places? And how are you perceiving your work in those two different places? Like something I notice is that I feel like if I am not like the more like self-actualized I become, <laughs> I feel like the f- the less funny I am in my writing. Oh my gosh, I had a client that felt that if they continued to heal, they would no longer be funny. And it was yeah. a big block that that we worked yeah. through. Yeah. Like I don't find certain jokes funny. I don't find certain like ways of self-deprecating myself funny. Mm-hmm. And it's been an interesting task, like especially with now me working on this newsletter that I'm going to launch, finding what humor I'm comfortable with without feeling like a fucking loser. Well, I, it's funny because it just points to that lack again, right? Like, why are you not funny if you don't like those jokes versus why not is your humor taste just changing? Yeah. Because in our day-to-day, there is no lack of humor. I just think it's like the low hang, that those jokes are the low hanging fruit that are like not hard right. to make. So I think right. if anything, it's just challenging me. To differentiate even more with your own perspective. Something that I admire about the way that I used to write is like there was a lot of me injected into it. At least from my perspective, obviously I'm biased, but I just felt like you knew it was me writing it. Mm. My favorite writers, that's something that I like about them is I can spot their voice Mm -hmm. and their tone. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm also excited about this newsletter because that was the point of starting this newsletter for me is like getting back into the swing of like my voice, not the voice that I use when I write for magazines because I have to adjust to their tone. Not to project, but I also wonder if that has anything to do with showing up on the internet more in a different capacity. Cause I've found that I change the way I show up as myself. Even okay. So last night, last night I was like, Oh, I should make a TikTok. I haven't made one in a while and I'm trying to be mm-hmm. a team player. And I do have something I could say, let me figure out how I want to say it in this way. And I said to Aaron, I was like, can you put on headphones so I can go in the other room and film this? And he was like, why? Like, why are you being a weirdo? And I said, because when I show up on that platform, because I'm trying to be a team player and do it as a means to an end to translate people to a different format so I don't have to be there, there's a compartmentalization between me and who I show up online. Like I'm a different version of myself on TikTok than I am here, than I, of course, than I am with my husband. And I said, when you're in front of me and I'm trying to do the song and dance, it's a lot harder to hold that boundary. Cause when I look at you, I feel like myself and I'm not trying to show up on myself on that platform. I'm trying to show up as a part of myself, but Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to show up as my whole unique individual self in the same way I do like to show up here in this space. And I think that's okay to show up differently in different online spaces because it's fucking crazy out there. But I wonder if the same goes for you in terms of your writing of when we're learning in real time, like how we show up in different platforms, how much of ourselves we want to be seen in what ways in different areas, especially having this podcast. Like I found that it affects the way I write and how much I inject myself into it, especially Mm -hmm. dependent on which, depending on if it's something for myself or writing for someone else. Do you remember how I've told you that I'm always scared someone's going to read my journal? Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I do I I do it a lot less now, but I think just the job that I used to have being somebody's assistant and being like in a role where you are literally like a rep, you're representing someone, you're their yeah. first, you're the first entry point to getting to them. My social media being private, like 
Mm-hmm. Uh, that is still sort of ingrained in my head a little bit where like, I always think about like, is my old boss going to see this? And like, what is she going to think about it through her lens? Because I obviously like care about her opinion and I value mm-hmm. her opinion a lot. And so it's funny because the way that I show up on different social medias is, is different. And I'm curious, like, do you like what you portray on your socials? Cause it's funny that you say that because when I watch your TikToks, I don't think like, Oh, Meadow's being different. So you're right. It is like an exact it's just one piece of your personality. It's not like a different mm-hmm. version of you. But I keep other pieces on lock from it purposefully. And But purposefully. you like how? To protect myself. That, at least on TikTok. I, you're kind of getting into my unpacking now because I did mm. recently go through and archive over half of my Instagram posts. Well, I was thinking about that when I was thinking about my unpacking. Which bleeds into my unpacking. So I want to finish yours first because ours are linked in you know two sides of the same coin in an interesting way. But I'll say right now on TikTok, like having that just be one piece and and securing the rest for a different medium or different people is comfortable and feels like a healthy boundary for me. Absolutely. What's it funny is that I hate the way I come across come across on TikTok. Really? What how do you think you come across? Boring and like annoying. <laughs> Honestly, I think it's because I'm trying to find my comfortability zone and my boundary zone mm. that I I think when I am making these videos that like I I like the content of the video and what I want to say, but like I'm bullet pointing things out on my notes app to like prep me for the video and I think just the way that I communicate it, I don't know, I just think I have the tendency to have this like resting bitch face that like If I'm not actively being like, let's have personality. Like, okay, when I did that Birdie and TJ Maxx ad, oh my God, I was on a set, guys, and I was so fucking excited to be there. We were shooting, and there were a lot of parts of that that were scripted that I was like kind of uncomfortable Mm. with because I'm more comfortable just like riffing. Right. Anyway. She, the director is like, okay, amazing. Like now let's do it a little bit more like crazy. And like, she's like doing all these faces and she's like, well, get a little like more comfortable, whatever. So in my head, I'm like, commit to the bit, bitch. Like, even though you're so uncomfortable with like the acting element of it all, Uh commit, like you're Uh here, do it. So I like do it. And in my head, I'm like, I look like a fucking moron. I watched that footage and I was like, I look barely happy to be alive. (laughs) Like it was <laughs> gnarly. What I think in my head is me looking crazy is me breathing. <laughs> it was wild. It was wild. So oh like, God. like on TikTok, like I feel like that's why I like YouTube, but you know, we're long format bitches. Like I feel like the way that I come off on the podcast is my, probably my favorite version of myself because it's just me talking to you. I'm comfortable with you. Exactly. Exactly. And I, I'll be raunchy and I'll curse and you know, whatever versus YouTube, which is like a little bit more curated, but I'm still just talking to myself, right? which is like still fun for me. And then I think TikTok, I'm just the least me. And then Instagram, Instagram, like now I'm trying to get back into it because like me two summers ago was like, this is what I'm saying. I was the funniest. My engagement was the highest. I was fucking hilarious on the internet, but I was, it's cause I was single. So I was dating. Mm-hmm. So I had like constant tea, but also I was like crazy. Yeah. So my humor was You're crazy. Unhinged. Yeah. So like yeah. now I'm just like, I'm a boring old maid who's like in a relationship. Oh my God. But it's so not boring. It's like this weird identity crisis. (laughs) It's so not boring though, because it's the humor just changes. Like the shit that is funny is just different and more interesting and more nuanced. And just, that's what I mean. There's no lack of humor. It's just a different phase, different meeting a present moment with like as a different person. But anyway, I'm getting, I'm getting ahead of myself. And now I'm just talking about a million different things, but to reel it back into that initial unpacking, it's, I'm, it's been really helpful to now look at projects of like, there's not going to be the one thing that's like my life's work. Like I want multiple Why would you want to be a 15 work. minutes of fit? What, exactly. Minutes? Is it exactly. exactly. And yeah. I was talking 15 minutes, 15 minutes. I don't, I don't know. know. I was on a call today with my friend Sharif, who's an extremely talented creative director, marketing genius, like amazing. And I, all of our phone calls and like every time we meet there, it's just so fruitful. And he's so interesting to talk to. We were talking today and he was like, 
why, like I, I was telling about a project that I'm working on that is in a f- industry, like in a part of an industry that I've never worked in. And he was like, why are you approaching it that way? Like you should be approaching it as the writer that you are. Like approach mm-hmm. it, inject yourself in that way. And then once you're on your seventh version, like once you're on your seventh, you know, project in this industry, then you can be, you can be coming at it from these different angles. And when mm-hmm. he said that, that was like for something different. But when he said that, it made me think about my unpacking of like, that's exciting to me. Mm-hmm. Instead of saying like, I'm going to have this one life's work. How cool that like, if I just start just putting shit out there, whether it fails or it doesn't fail, like I'll have a l- bigger like breadth of work to show and like hopefully, you know, like touch more lives and and connect with more people. And like, I'd rather do that. We could even go down a huge rabbit hole of the subjective meaning of failure. Like, how do you even want to quantify that? You know, we could even do it. That's a whole other unpacking. So what's to say any of it would be a failure or could be a failure? Because if it served you and was a true expression of yourself and your art at that time, Mm -hmm. how is that not marketed as a success, whether or not other people land with it or not? You know what I mean? Like we could do that whole game too. But anyway. But that's cool. That's cool. So you're feeling thoughts. renewed and refreshed coming out, like uh, now leaning into this abundance mindset with creativity. Yeah. How has it changed yeah. your habits? The, I read the chapter this week, so give me a minute. But okay. <laughs> I'm like, I'm. it's changed my habits in the way that like I'm actually doing, like I'm putting out the fucking newsletter. Yeah. I'm not just like continuously like editing, which by the way, I sent you my welcome letter for you to read. I haven't read um, it yet. I'm very excited. But I don't know if I'm going to do like first send is the welcome letter or first send is the like, hi, here's some housekeeping. Like, I don't know how logistically that is supposed to work. So IGK. I think supposed to. But, again, it's subjective. You do whatever the fuck you want. And I guess Substack has backlog so people can like go and there you read go. it, I guess. if they, I don't fucking know. It doesn't really matter. But I'm putting it out. I'm excited for you. You've talked about this for a long time. Anyway, tie in yours. It's 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 similar. I am unpacking showing up as a new version of myself yet again, but bringing <laughs> the past into my present. I am a bitch that has reinvented herself many a times. Like I have showed up as a new brand new version of me over and over and over and over again. And I think when I was younger, I felt like it was a problem or felt like Hmm. it spoke to that I couldn't stick to one interest or oneself or one that like I felt too much like I was changing and that it wasn't normal when other people felt more similar and more consistent and I I didn't feel consistent. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I used to think of it as a problem. And then I've also had to reinvent myself in different ways. Like sometimes it just kind of sneaks up and all of a sudden you just feel differently. Sometimes you have to grieve and mourn past versions of yours. I was 17 and I had to go from someone that identified as having a dad to have had a dad. So sometimes there's like the grief involved in it. Sometimes it just kind of shows up overnight. Sometimes it's a breakup and you change your hair and your clothes and you want to be more yourself again because you got too influenced by a codependent friend or a break, you know, whatever it may be. So I've been through different versions of this, but I feel one again very, very recently, like in the past week. And it feels different because this time I am very intentionally bringing my past into my, my past versions of self with me. So I think having done so much shadow work in the past two Mm -hmm. years, like that's been the real breadth of my personal work on and offline the past two years is basically shadow work. I think doing so much of that now in the past coming into these new versions of self, I would either not be cringed, but like, Oh, look at silly little young meadow or, Oh, look at that. Like, that's so cute. Like that you think that or embarrassing or like, Oh, you wore this out, whatever. Like all the stories we kind of paint and rather than dismissing them, like I'm very intentionally thanking past versions of me and asking to bring that wisdom and those lessons and those mistakes and everything with me into the now while still moving forward as a completely new version of myself. Mm. And it was funny because one of the ways when you and I were texting and I, (laughs) which we should show because it made me laugh so hard. Gabby, (laughs) I (laughs) 
had archived one of the photos that Gabby and I had shared together. And it says, Meadow Monahan has removed herself from your post. And you took a screenshot and sent it to me and said, are you breaking up with me? And I was sitting on the toilet while I sent it to you. <laughs> it, made, it truly made me laugh out loud. And I was just sitting there just archiving a bunch of stuff and not in the way of, again, like I think I've done that in the past or archived old stuff where I'm like, oh, that doesn't resonate or I don't like this outfit anymore. Or, I don't look cool here. Or, this photo is in as aesthetic or whatever. And this time it was very, it was almost in that TikTok way of I'm really learning myself and I'm super stoked on this integrated version of myself I am right now and how I want to show up on different platforms and the boundaries I want to have and where I think you and I are going very, very soon and how I want people to find me there looks differently than like having access to every version of me that I've ever been. Mm -hmm. I don't think everyone needs that. And mm -hmm. I can integrate that and bring that with me, but I don't think everyone needs access to that. Yeah. And so really playing with that recently. And then it also worked out really well for me because yesterday my husband texted me out of nowhere and was like, I was just scrolling through your Instagram and my God, my wife is so hot and cool. And I was like, yeah, my editing worked, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> to be superficial about it, but it's cool. I don't know. I just, I feel like a rebirth. Like I feel like a different version of me yet again for the upteenth time, but I feel like I'm approaching it differently in a way that feels calmer, feels more grounded. I don't, I'm not judging myself for yet again, moving through something or wanting to be mm -hmm. a different version of self. And instead I'm like very excited and grateful for all the past versions of myself to get me to this moment. Because I, I know within two weeks, I'll feel like a different version yet again. Yeah. Why do you think we named the show thoughts may vary? Like we reserve yeah. the right to show up differently in every single moment, but I'm having a really nice time doing that. And I think in the past it's involved that grief or involved that shame or involved ego a mm -hmm. lot more than it is right now. Mm. And it's, it's fun to play with. It's definitely fun to play with. A couple of things that I was thinking about when you were talking. Number one, I don't think I've been your friend since you've... I mean, I feel like you've had a different like rebirth from mm. when I first met you over to mm -hmm. like Meadow going into her 30s. Well, we also talk every single day, so it's been slower. But you and I yeah, are but I notice it. completely different people than we Yeah, we but were I, we, yeah. I totally notice it. So even though I don't have like a perfect marker yeah. to think about it, because I didn't know you and I've only heard about College Meadow <laughs> and the <laughs> previous Meadows. Godspeed to anyone that knew me then. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm not. Knowing you now, <laughs> even though I didn't know you then, I can just tell that it was so much more of like – correct me if I'm wrong, like performance art every time you would change. Absolutely. Rather Absolutely. than now you're like, no, 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 this is just the, like it or like, this is just a representation of like me now. Yes. And that's why I like that you brought up that you feel calm. You feel that way? Yeah. Yes. No, uh, you, you hit it on the nose. And part of that again, feels like that artist without a medium narrative that's carried mm -hmm. me through my whole life. And now for the first time, I feel like I actually know what type of artist I am and how I, how I create and show up in see like an artist in my day-to-day -day life and I'm reading all these, like, I just, I feel that so differently now. And that bleeds into that egocentric way I present my personality and the way I was attached yeah. to my personality in these past versions of myself, which is again, one of those reasons I can look to the past with all that like grace and compassion, but I have so much more space between my self-concept and my personality versus college me. Like I was my whole personality. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I don't remember when I said it to you, but you remember when I told you, I was like, you are just so grounded in you. I remember- I it, was, it was like either right before or right after my coven trip. It was like six to eight months ago. I feel like it was even no? before. Was it longer? Maybe. No, I think it was between six to eight months ago, but I think it was before- Oh, Sedona. I, I don't know why. I feel like it was before Sedona. I think but it was Maybe new. it wasn't. But I just remember- yeah, it wasn't this like overnight shift, but it's just even seeing the ways in which you've changed where you're just so much like you are you. It's not even about being mm -hmm. comfortable with who you are. Like you're just existing as yourself. Even like yeah. when your whole like rebirth with fashion and the way that you've been dressing and like if you listening were at an event with Meadow and you're in a room with her and a million other people, like you you are not resembling any other human there. Oh wow. That's nice. Like especially like just cuz because you're showing up as yourself. Kind of yeah. You're not, and yeah. I don't mean like aesthetically, yeah, maybe she's wearing like the no, same no, jeans no, as somebody or whatever the fuck, yeah. but like yeah. you are just showing up as you and there aren't two yous. That's one of my favorite things you've ever said to me. I don't know if you know that, but you, it was either in like a birthday card or a birthday caption or something. And you said that it's the way you just show up as yourself everywhere you go. And it's like one of my yeah. favorite compliments I've ever gotten. I love that. Cause I worked hard to like myself enough to do that. 
like you're cool as fuck and it shows like you just are you and now I love myself so much (laughs) the only thing I need validated is my parking and that's on self-development see she still has got jokes they're just not as self-deprecating right just remember when (laughs) just looking back now in your place now and speaking about this humor and stuff the difference between when I would post on TikTok Friday and you would post on TikTok Friday, like the single, t- like, do you look back now and you're like, oh, I was in a different place? Well, yeah, it was like all like thoughty, yeah. like <laughs> for the streets content. Except I will say I have a bone to pick with you about your TikTok Fridays. So if nobody knows, I run TikTok Fridays on Thoughts Not Very podcast. Nobody and knows. You make a point of saying it all the time, well, Gabriella. Everyone because knows. Here's the thing. Meadow thinks I ignore hers. And sometimes I frankly <laughs> just forget. I forget. Sure, I forget. That's convenient. That's convenient. I need to put, I'm going to put it in my calendar right above my weekly notification and say, check Meadow's DMs. Cause I honestly forget Sure. because I just said so many because I'm on TikTok for you do. Many hours. You do send so many. Yeah. But I often, send significantly less than you. So it, right. I get it. And time and time again, not time and time again, every now and again, I can't do it. And so Meadow will very kindly take over the role of TikTok Friday. And she always gloats on the story before she does it. She's yeah, like, I do. I'm so excited. It's I'm me. Here. I'm going to post the one that shine. Gabby's ignored. And you know yeah. what she does? What I do? This cheap ass bitch posts what like I do. You post like seven for the people. Are you supposed to post more? I posted Girl, like fourteen not, last time. Do you not notice how many I post? I post like a good like twenty to thirty for the people. At least like twenty. That's just excessive. I know. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, I'll like post I, more. You didn't tell me the feedback. I can listen to criticism. Well, because I didn't notice because I didn't check your TikTok Friday because I was traveling, but I, I went really to go see what like you had 15. posted. I thought no, that was like average. Let's find out. Let's get – let's okay. get right. let's get the receipts because I checked because I went to go – I looked at our archive before I posted this one just to make sure I didn't double post anything. Oh, and I, I definitely I didn't do that. was appalled. <laughs> I was fucking appalled. Well, now you've told me how I know, and knowledge is power, so I'll move forward, and next time you can't do it, I'll right. post 45. And what just cracks me up is, like, how much you were gloating, and then you just were skimpy. Okay, welcome back. I was gloating Buckle on up. content, One, two, not three, four, five. quality, not quantity. You posted 14. I called that one. I don't know why I felt really short to me. I really came on really strong. Sorry, guys. No, that's okay. Now I'll post 25 next time. Yeah. All right. Well, I I did. I was just gloating about quality over it was quantity. Funny. You did do well, a good and job. also because we do have different humor TikToks. Like the TikToks Aaron and I send, which you and yeah. I send personally, but it's not always. I think a lot of the TikToks that I like to send to you are not necessarily TMV humor. Yeah. So when I go on TMV, I try to post ones sometimes that are more specific to me and not TMV humor, just because I like them. Well, do you feel like I've gotten better at refining? Yes. Those jokes that you don't find funny? Yeah. Yes. There was some, okay. when you were single, I didn't like half of TikTok Friday and now yeah. I love TikTok Friday. Okay. Yeah. I feel like I've made an effort. There was just a lot of like shitting on toxic. men jokes, which is like funny, but then at a certain point you're like, we got to just, we got we to be included. We got to stop it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I've stopped. It bleeds in. No, you did. And I, I love them. I text you though. I always text you and tell you when they kill mm-hmm. me. I do want to also say I know we we kind of touched on this at New Year's, but again, like you don't have to wait for a breakup. You don't have to wait for New Year's. You don't have to wait for your birthday. Like you could press pause on this podcast right now and decide the next breath you take moving forward, you're that new version of self. Like it's mm-hmm. so in your power to do that at any point in time. You know, we've said this before, but you can approach patterns in two ways. Like they're ingrained and they're subconscious and you can't break out of them and it's so hard or like you're on the edge of breaking them at any point in time. Yeah. So you really, you have in your, and I, I just find that so empowering to know that is in my control to show up as the version of self I want to be at any given moment. And like turning a fresh page at any given moment is a hundred percent in my power. No one can take that from me. Exactly. And that's reassuring because that's an internal shift. It doesn't depend on where you could be in the exact same scenario, whether or not the scenario is somewhere you want to be in or not, but the internal shift to show up differently in that scenario is of your efficacy. Obviously I'm speaking to that we see take here's my one bone with TikTok. How many the the amount of placators I feel I need to put or parameters or bumper cars on the side of the fucking bowling lanes to explain a point. I know. People, but I know it's a safe space to not do that here because people <sighs> listen and they know what we're they know what we're, what know. we're about. And the thing is, it's so funny because you posted a TikTok recently. 
it's about something. I can't remember which one it was, but it was about something that we've talked about on the podcast, which we added 45 bumpers to the way that we said it. Mm. And you did it in your TikTok, but it didn't necessarily require it. It was like, you just didn't include something, but it was like, like, it was like a different type of graphic or it was like, I don't remember like exactly whatever, but somebody made a comment about it and you were like, you responded and you were like, that I'm obviously not talking about that. Like that obviously means X, Y, Z thing. Right. And I was like, it's just so funny because no matter the way that you say something, somebody yeah. is going to be like, but excuse me, you didn't say it this way. Like right. you're like, yeah, that's why that's, I just, ugh, long form the internet or die, has, baby, long form or die. that's what I'm saying. But also it's just like, unless, again, we always say it and here's my fucking caveat that we always give. It's like, unless you're like hurting someone, you're saying something that is racist or homophobic or xenophobic or like just in any of those fucking fucked up categories like let's exclude all of that but it's like aside from those fucked up things this short form content has lended itself for people having zero deductive reasoning skills oh yeah zero like not every one minute tiktok is going to encapsulate like the whole food for thought Or whatever fucking point you're trying to get across. It's also interesting. Why do you feel like someone needs to make the point that you're yelling at them that you want made? Like, that's interesting to look at yourself. Like, why does that have to come from, I, I, it just, it, mm. it, you have me thinking about like advocacy and the way people yell for other people to show up on the internet in certain ways. And I just find it interesting. Like if, if, if you're concept is like so angered by someone not saying something like where do you just need to say that in your own life or like why what what makes you need someone to say xyz i just think it's an interesting to explore i was watching we all know damon dominique is one of my favorite youtubers of all time i love love Mm -hmm. love him and he's been recently posting video essays and posted one called why i don't do social media anymore or post on social media anymore and it, it touches on a lot of these concepts, but he just like brilliantly breaks down why we don't have deductive reasoning, why we don't, why we, we don't have like analytical critical thinking skills, why we expect people to show up in certain ways. Why is there a need to constantly as creators and as people that want to make art, I don't want our audience to become addicted to us and our content. Like we make content so that people can think and have ideas and prompt their own self-worth and grow out, go out into the world versus like people that show up and are really living for the algorithm and making content just to further addict yourself and your community. It's just, it, there's just so much to unpack there. And I really like his perspective because you and I have talked about this before in terms of even if it hurts us in the long run by not going with the algorithm, whatever the fuck, like if there, if you don't have something to say, don't show up. Like we don't need to all be making mm-hmm. things all the time. Like, we need to like be I, filling the void all the time. Yeah, and, and I, by the way, I like, I, I, sorry, I'm interrupting you because no, of what you said. Of like, if you don't have something to say, like, there are people that like just create content purely for like companionship purposes, and I think that's great. Sure. Are they saying the most groundbreaking thing ever? No, but there, there's a purpose. Like you're serving right. a purpose, even if to somebody else it makes no sense or it's not meaningful. It's like who knows if that person that's watching your video has negative one friends. And now they feel like they have a friend. And humor can be purposeful. So I'm not saying like Mm -hmm. posting stupid shit doesn't always have purpose or value. Uh Uh-oh. But it's it's just that. It's just that like we're all participating in something to continue to addict ourselves and our community. And like at what point do we just need to look at that and say we're not doing it that way? When the money dries up, honey. It's just oof. It's just oof. And I can't I'm like, do I want to say this online? Well, say it to me and we can edit it I just it out. think that you and I, I'll say it in a way that doesn't need to be edited. And if it needs to be edited, we can edit it. You and I have recently been through something with our business that I'm really proud of the way that it's turning out. Mm-hmm. And we'll talk about it more in detail. And I'm sorry that this is annoying if it is. But I'm really proud of how Meadow and I have handled the integrity of thoughts may vary Mm -hmm. throughout the two years that we've been doing this. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's all I'll say. That's all I'll say. Oh, but that feels like such an ellipses at the end of that. I want to know more. I'm just edging the audience. All over, all over. Never before has a boy wanted more. No. Okay. Let's go. No. Mm -mm. Raised by 
musical, so it's fine. Yeah. You know, when I was born, that opera music was blasting. Don't you feel like that explains so much? Yeah. It really adds My dad up, right? used to blast Oscar. Oscar. <laughs> I mean, I'm, Oscar music? how many times have we said Classical it? Your music. dad and my yeah. mom need to have a dinner. Like, that would just be the funniest, most inappropriate. That dinner would get us canceled. That day would just talk Like, in if circles. there was anyone around, and so inappropriately. But just in circles. It'd be amazing. My dad would forget that he said the same story, and your mom would just go with it. Yeah, but she does that, too. Right. So they would just talk at each other. I don't think anybody, I don't think there would be a conversation. I think they would just yeah, be no, speaking. Yeah, no, they'd talk at each other. Yeah. It'd be a podcast Which I at each other. I would love to see happen. <laughs> I think they would love it. They would have a great time. They would have a great time. God, I can't believe that a week and a half later, I still have blisters on my feet and scabs from that fucking wedding. Had a good time. Gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah. Had a great time. All right, so Luteal. I'll <laughs> see you later. Luteal! <laughs> TTYL. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Secrets we'll revealed you. soon. Okay, we'll see you in our next episode, which is a QA. and a Ciao. For see now. you there. Bye. How's it going, y'all? It's Aaron. Don't let your Monday suck. Don't have those Sunday scaries. I'm tired of everybody waking up in the week saying, ah, shit, it's Monday. You know what goes down? TMV releases every week on Mondays. Make sure you rate and review wherever you get your podcasts. And if you're watching YouTube, yes, TMV has a YouTube. Be sure to subscribe and ring that noti bell and never miss a thing. And also, join the TMV familia by joining the Thoughts May Vary Patreon and by following at Thoughts May Vary Pod on Instagram and TikTok. Thank you for listening. There you go. Thanks, baby. Gotcha.